All right, today I'm with Natasha Berta, and we're going to talk about uh, marketing and kind of what she has been learning, how she has been growing. Um, she is a member of my Master Heart Business Mentoring Group, and she's been helpful to, well, a lot of people in the group. Uh, and uh, she, she does things, she does similar things, actually, to, to what I do. She helps um, heart-based uh, solopreneurs, small businesses, um, reach more of their ideal clients and the sort of technical aspects behind all that too. Um, anyway, Natasha, thanks for doing this and I'm, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Thanks, George. Yeah, it was a good moment for me to find a kindred soul in the world in terms of someone who's a marketer but also doesn't want to just keep spouting out the same stuff as certain other marketers and, and who, like I love the way you challenge norms and that you you know you let us be true to ourselves and still be focused on growing so that's yeah that's i love and uh, you know i want to ask you about that because um there's a lot of you know being true to ourselves um you know in the sort of more spiritual space spiritual business spiritual marketing space i guess what i'm trying to say is that um is it true to ourselves to work on a some kind of consistent basis? Is that being true to ourselves? Or is it more like, I'm just going to follow my flow, whatever I feel like doing today. That's really being true to myself. And I, I'm, I'm, I, this is a good, this is an interesting conversation because, um, you know, some people say, I don't, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this forward in a, in a, in a, in a moment, in a sort of um, an attitude of, I actually don't know. Mm. Uh, and I'm genuinely curious. Mm. If someone says, I just follow divine guidance throughout the day. <laughs> it makes me curious. It's like, wow, you really know what God is saying or God is, or source is saying to you at all times. You are just astounding. I should... I should study under you. I should mm. you know, mentor under you because you just follow divine guidance all day. So I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm and, and I'm, I'm asking you the question. I'm having this conversation with you because you are a very spiritual person. You, uh, do you want to just say a little bit, just touch on mm. your background a little bit? here? Yeah, I guess so. I guess things that some people don't know about me because they meet me in this marketing context. Right. Is when I was 16, I left high school and everyone told me, that I should do a commerce degree because I was great at maths and I did enjoy the subject commerce at school but I was also a complete feminist punk rebel and there was no way I was going to work for the man that's and awesome I, was also... I love it I just, I just wanted to pause and say I love it <laughs> it's hilarious it's such a funny journey so I I was really politically driven and I just didn't want to be put in any kind of box and I still feel that's all very active for me still. Um, and I was also really looking, because I was raised atheist, such a different path to you, but I was raised completely atheist and I felt this emptiness and I was reading every book about religion, trying to understand, well, what is Christianity? What is Sufism? What is like all these things that I keep wow. hearing about? I read all kind of Buddhist books and I was doing yoga classes and then I ended up going really deep in a deep yogic immersion and I used to shave my head and wear orange and wow. I have a Sanskrit name yoga varnam which is I still relate to that that's what that means because I've seen, that's like I've my seen that reality. word you know in your profile somewhere you know here and I there. could it's a bit confusing because Facebook went through a phase where they said if you use a pseudonym right um we will close your account yeah so yeah, I was like oh my god okay so I better about that. use my Christian name <laughs> and um it sort of feels like a nice separation in some way that like, oh yeah, I just did my Christian name for work. That's all the legal paperwork stuff's in that. But if people, people, my clients get this hunch, like, what should I call you? I feel like, I feel like I shouldn't call you Natasha. I'm like, well, and then I tell them, look, you can call me Yo, you can call me Yogi or Yogavan. I'm like, that's actually the name I use with friends. But so I kind of vacillated with that for a long time because I was a young person. I was a bit lost. I was like, go, deep yogic and then ditch that and then go deep like anti-spiritual because I had a bit of a tough time in that yoga community where I was like if that's spiritual I don't want to do that and then 
went through a lot of different things and got to a point where I was working as a barista and I thought I was 30 something and I thought my god if I'm still doing this when I'm 50 I'm not going to be happy so I need to get a degree because that's something I didn't do and here where I lived there was arts which is literature based arts nursing or commerce and I was like there's no way I'm going to be a nurse but I'll do a few of each arts and commerce subjects to see which I prefer and which I do better at. And I was just smashing commerce out of the ballpark. I would just get really great grades in that without trying very hard. So I did that not really knowing what direction that would take me, feeling really strongly like I wasn't into marketing, that marketing was about manipulation. I had so many deep ingrained values about compassion and love and and there was no way I was gonna be part of that. So I tried, oh, maybe I'll do an accounting major. I tried all the different things, HR, blah, blah, blah. And then I had this amazing lecturer who was so into the creative side and the um, the beauty of it and connecting with people. And he was so engaged and, and the content was great. And I was like, okay, systems and creativity and communication are actually three big strengths for me. And maybe marketing is a fit, but it has to be my way. So there is a place where, yeah, people might see that I'm promoting myself as a marketer, but there's a, a much longer and more ingrained part of my life that's about spiritual growth. Mm. I love it. Yeah, that's why <laughs> that's why we're having. So, um, so, so back to that question, right? Mm. And, and and again, I'm I'm approaching it out of a curiosity because I know that I, I know nothing. I, I mean, I mean, I know nothing compared to the truth if you want to say that or the reality which is uh, far far grander and far more mysterious than um than i than i can imagine and i what i do know that is that i am grateful for uh a a good life right now a good business um i those of probably everybody here knows i kind of follow a, a system um i make plans I strategize and then I just work as much as I possibly can in joyful productivity throughout the day, just following my plans. And of course, I keep tweaking the plans all day. This is coming from my past when I grew up um, rebelling against discipline because I grew up having to take piano lessons and violin lessons and trying to get good grades and um, you know, uh, coming from the, uh, you know, Chinese culture, immigrant culture, it's like there was a lot of pressure for all that. And so I was, I had a tough time as a kid, um, it grew, really through college, I had a tough time through my 20s, I had a tough time, because I kept rebelling against discipline and structure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wasn't until I learned it really in the past seven to 10 years of, of my business, where Joe for Productivity was born was like, there is a way, there's a way through this. Mm-hmm. It's like you can you can make friends with discipline and structure and systems and show up, you know, I like to say uninspired, but willing. It's like the other day I was, I found myself saying, you know what? I actually believe a lot in taking uninspired action <laughs> because mm-hmm. I'm uninspired most of the time. <laughs> and yet if I'm uninspired most of the time, if you, if you told me, George, you have to be consistent. No, I'm not going to be. If, I, if you want me to be inspired and consistent, just, sorry, I'm going to close my business yeah. because I'm not inspired most of the time. Mm. I really am not. It's like if you were to give me a choice, I would be on the couch watching videos, playing video games, eating potato chips all day mm. and walking my dog when he needs to walk. That, that's mm. my entire day would be that. And so I, I had to learn to say, okay, no, I don't feel like writing, but I'm going to write. I don't feel like making a video but I'm going to make a video. I don't feel like writing a sales page, but I'm going to make a sales page because I, I don't feel like even meeting with clients. But once I start meeting with them, <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. I, didn't want, I don't want to do any interviews, but once we're here, there's a joy here. Mm. There's a heart yeah. connection here. Yeah. And so I know that I just have to, the first few minutes, practice breathing into it. And then once I'm into it, maybe it sometimes it takes me half an hour and then I'm like, oh, I'm so proud I did that. But, mm. but so that's how I have found my way through. And so I'm so curious about the people who say, I just follow divine guidance all day. Like, mm. wow, that's amazing. How's your business going? <laughs> you know, yeah. I almost want to, I mean, and usually 
they have ups and lots of lots of drama and ups and downs which i i feel like oh my god i wouldn't want that you know in my mm. own life i'm really grateful to have a really super calm life super mm-hmm. stable calm life mm. some people would call it boring i call it joyfully you know i i i curate my life essentially but sorry long <laughs> Long I like it. I want to bring you back because you have such a great integration of that. You know, because you help people with systems, mm. and yet I wanted you to tell the story of your past, and, and so yeah. I feel like a lot of people watching and listening can relate to you. Tell us, man, what is <laughs> how, how have you done this? Yeah, I have a number of clients also who want to just follow their flow. Thank you. Yes. So my people, they they're like mystical they're tapped into something I like to channel something through and they feel very constricted and constrained by any planning so I understand that approach I have been there for many years in my business I didn't even quite remember what I was doing because I don't have any record of what I was doing right so before I had a calendar system I'm not sure. I, I don't know how I pulled it off, but I did manage to build my business. So, I mean, that it's possible to be that. And I was that person. I was like, no, no, having a system is not going to work for me because I'm a free agent. I'm a rebel. And when I would even try to set up a structure, I would just rebel against it. And my husband laughs. He's like, yeah, but you even rebel against the things you know are good for you. I'm like, yeah, I, it shits. Like, uh, maybe I shouldn't swear on this one. It drives me crazy as well. Feel free to, feel free to swear, <laughs> Because <please. laughs> there's that part of me that understands that would be good. That would be good for me if I would X, like stop X or start Y. Mm-hmm. But there's so much tension of like how to get that to happen. So I don't know really what I did for all those years, but I did pull it off to do certain things. And I had a bunch, like a couple of years of coaching um, with a woman who does what I would say is more pure coaching where really they create space for you to work through your process. They don't make suggestions and it's very self-driven. And I understand that that's impactful because I was practicing that and I would coach others and I would really not say much. And it's so interesting using these leading questions and reflecting back to people how just watching someone navigate a problem and seeing them reveal their solutions and then seeing them have buy-in and implement those. So I love coaching and I had a couple of years. I I just want to say, I love how you describe that. That It's brilliant. And I I think I I believe in that too. It's like, we all have the answers within us, Mm. which is why back to can we just live through divine guidance? Well, all day I mean, long. if you if you run that experiment and you find that that works for you, and you're really happy with the way it flows, I would say, cool. Like, don't don't do the calendar system. Like, don't do it. It's fine. And I know this is very uh, um, alive for you at the moment because we're doing that um, thoughtful, loving calendar process in Master Heart, which is really lovely. And I actually thought oh, no, I don't need to do that because, like, I'm totally doing a calendar already. But as soon as I stepped into the practice of being, like, evaluating that and trying to explain it to other people, I started to remember all my little current disgruntlements with my calendar and the little things that are slipping away in the way that things aren't happening. So I'd say the calendar is just a big, fat experiment. And I'm okay with that because I think marketing is a big, fat experiment and I think life's a big, fat experiment. So... If you think you don't like the calendar, maybe just try and see. And I'll just and say, I'll, I'll just rename that. that big fun experiment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, whatever you like to call yeah. it. And I'd say without the coaching, I don't know if I could have come into the calendar thing because I, it's very much like from me. I don't feel like George is making me do it. And like, no one's making me do it. I just have become ready. Like I've become ripe. And I think that's the thing as well, that there are different types of people. Like you've had your journey and your process and you have a certain um, what's uh, constitution and certain genetic dispositions and conditional dispositions that make this point in time ripe for you to use this practice and this process. And I guess I've come to that through like my partner does the same meditation practice and me and he is so into, he doesn't understand why everyone in the world doesn't do it. I'm like, well, babe, everyone's constitutionally different and we have this different ripeness. So I guess that's the thing. Like I see certain people 
adamantly stating that they don't have the calendar, they live in a state of flow and they will not do it. I'm like, cool, like that's their truth. They're either like wherever, they're just in a different space evolutionarily and that's cool yeah, right <laughs> and um for me the calendar is like i'm so in love i feel more productive than ever yeah um yeah you know i understand what needs to happen and i have a similar experience to you where i've been trying to write a sales page and i've been telling myself i'm not a good writer oh. and the first time i sat down at the blank page like this I, with I my hand on the keys yeah and i was like seized up I was like oh just write one sentence and I did and then boom like this huge floodgate of writing came out that I didn't even know I was capable of so there is something in that and I wonder for certain people what will help them in that time block to take the first step because I find that that first step then opens something up something comes <laughs> for me thank you thank you this is this is brilliant I I I mean, and you speak to you speak to all this from such a grounded space of having your own experience, but also having known a lot of clients and colleagues who have gone. And I and thank you for saying that it is everybody has their own path. Some of us share uh, a similar stage, obviously. That's why we can use similar tools. Um, but just because someone isn't using a tool or method or the George Cal system or whoever system you know, that meditation that, that your husband uses mm. or, or, you know, my energy reboot or what, whatever, <laughs> you know, it's like, you're right. It's like, um, it's so easy for us. If something is working so well for us, it's so easy to have that blind spot and say, well, everyone, it will, this is going to work for everybody. Wouldn't <laughs> yeah. it? And so yeah. it's it, for me, I know I should just state myself. It's easy for me to become evangelistic hmm. about, a method that works so well for me, which mm. actually has some benefit because evangelism and marketing are related. It's like the passion mm. that I have to mm. say, please try this. This mm. worked well for me uh, does come through and, and it does infect some people to say, well, maybe, sorry, wrong, wrong word, especially these days. It does influence or, 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 or inspire some people to say, yeah. well, let me, let me go and try that. So thank you for, 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 for giving the permission for people to have different pathways. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about um, a little bit about how you work then with clients. Mm -hmm. um, I love that you have the coaching background. I love that you have obviously the marketing strategy, philosophy, you know, viewpoints that you're really strong on that now. And you also have the technical. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what kind of, uh, what kind of clients do you most enjoy? working with and mm. how do you like to work with them what, what kinds of issues or, or goals do you do you like to help them with yeah well I've tried a few different things over time a, a few years ago I spent a whole year on this program that I invented out of my own head and I would not work with people in any other capacity except this one capacity and I have my worst financial year ever because it wasn't actually grounded in research I just plucked it out of my pretty head and so that was a good you know I can vouch for that 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 does not work <laughs> and in the on the side of that program I was doing this one-on-one -on -one work with people as like the money work you know the the money so swapping hours for time for money sorry so you know working at an hourly rate for clients doing website edits or email setup of automations or whatever anything really kind of working like a VA really in my mind not working at that high strategic level that I love or anyway there's lots of things I love I really need novelty and then I spent a year just being like right now I'm going to just work for the hourly rate and that was fine and I was like, okay, but there's only that many hours in the week. So how can I grow my business? So I tried having a team on the premise that, you know, I would pay the team X and then I would charge the client X plus a profit margin, as well as me doing things with clients. And the plan was for me to sort of work at the strategy level and the team to work at the implementation level. There is still a degree of that that I do and that I enjoy. And so what has been great for me this year is when I came into MasterHeart, I thought I was going to transition my business from a marketing business to a, 
personal transformation and healing business. And I think I didn't understand, like, I guess I got the hunch, like I was going to have a transition, but I thought that was the transition where, whereas we did the planning workshop just before Master Heart, and we looked at the different stages of business as you classify them. And I recognized that I could grow if I fully embraced that I'm at stage two, which is kind of being fully booked at one-on-one. And then with a view to moving into stage three, which is creating more courses and um, more leverage products in my business, which I had done a little bit of. Pardon me, I've got hay fever. Oh yeah, um, I, I hate that. <laughs> me too. It's all right. And um, so that's my main focus this year, I would say, is moving from stage two in business to stage three, which means moving from being fully swapping hours for dollars to having more products that are scalable and with a view to eventually I mean this is the the, like online dream is having you know that's what we all hear about oh like leverage and scale and like passive income and all of that and it always seems so elusive for so many people including my clients like they all want to run a course they all want to have evergreens they all want to do products that are scalable and I realized that just plucking something out of my head's no good. So I've been doing lots of market research, which has been paying off. And I'm running some beta versions of courses that I'm getting really excited about, getting lots of insights from, as well as um, still serving my one-to-one clients. So it's a lovely, sustainable way to transition because I don't have to go, oh, dump all the one-on-one work and just suddenly leap into this hard transition into courses. It's like, oh no, I can... I can do both. I can serve people and I can run courses. And I had all kinds of doubts, like would people like be pissed off with me because I'm like not available one-on-one anymore, but I haven't, I don't have to face that because I'm still doing both and I may still do both next year. I don't know what will happen. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And the fact that you have a a, a team helps with that because that, mm. that they can be, you're scaling your implementation arm of your business. But the other thing is once you decide to do less of the one-to-one, you can always refer work out, you know, and that's, that, that, that's what I find myself doing. And it's, it's a joy Mm -hmm. because then Mm -hmm. people can still ask me all day long for one-on-one, but that's okay. I have these (laughs) wonderful people that you should reach out to when you are one of them. I hope it's okay. I funnel some people to you. Yeah, that's great. So, so, um, thank you. I didn't really say, yeah, who they ahead. are, who my people are and what I do yes, for them. Yes, yes. So my people are usually like me, very spiritual minded and they're either coaches or mentors or they're healers of some kind. That's the kind of people I normally work. And women is who I normally work with because I'm like a raging feminist and I seem to just attract women and that's fine. Um, and I love to help people with websites. I've been really enjoying Facebook ads and um also email marketing. I like the automations and, and also Instagram things. ads. Oh yeah. Instagram ads. Cause that's yeah. part of it. And yeah. then the team sometimes and does email marketing. Um, okay. Yeah. The team email also does stuff, social, yeah. social media posting for people. Like yeah. if they have that one piece of content, then we can turn it into the carousel, the LinkedIn post, like we can tease it out. So that's super fun. I enjoy that, but I am really enjoying running courses as well. Awesome. Well, uh, that's why you're on always on my list of people that I refer if someone says, all right, George, I, I like that you have courses, but I'd like to actually work with somebody one-on-one to get the stuff done. Mm. Um, and I said, well, gosh, Natasha Berta, she's one of the people who knows all my stuff. She herself knows other stuff. That's good stuff. And she can help you actually implement it uh, mm. or have a team to help you. So thank you for doing that. And being, yeah, for, for having that availability. Um, well, any any kind of inspiring send off thoughts that you want to share as we as we close out here? Mm. Yeah, I think I realized yesterday on a call I was talking about email subject lines, and I realized there are all the industry recommendations that are just going to get kind of yelled at you. And that those marketers have a big budget and you are their target market and they know all your pain points. So you don't have to listen to them. It really is enough to be in in integrity, 
in alignment and you don't need a fancy subject line if you're just talking to someone as if you love them and you actually do you can't help but love the people you work with you get really into each other's jam and that's so beautiful so you don't have to try so hard if it feels fine to write something wacky as a subject line or something very you as an email subject line give it a try see what happens like it's not all about industry standards there is a lot of fun and experimentation and expression that you get to have as well wonderful wonderful uh reminder and i 100 percent agree with that so thank you natasha thank you. for um you. what you do how you do it uh your your just warm heart um and your sharp mind so um grateful to have you in master heart but just to be in you know in each other's you know universe so um thank you thanks to you george it's lovely to see you